Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another weekly dose of SNS. So by the time that you're watching this, I'm going to be up in Zanesville, Ohio at the Saunders Machine Works Open House, otherwise known as the NYC CNC Open House. So I'm going to have a card up here in the video for John Saunders' channel in case you don't watch him or don't know about it. You can click on that and he's supposed to be having a live stream of the open house. It's supposed to be a pretty good live stream and where he tested it the other day and it looked pretty good. So you might want to click on that sometime throughout the day and check it out. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on over there. For, for me, I'm very excited. It's, I had a great time last year and there's going to be a lot of people up there to visit this year. There's going to be a lot of YouTube guys. There's going to be a lot of viewers and sponsors, vendors and people like that. So I'm looking forward to it. And the only thing that, I'm, uh, that I know that I'm going to be upset about is that I'm not going to have enough time to hang out with everybody. And it seems like that's how it always goes when we go to these things, you know. I'm going to have all my friends that I'd like to hang out with, you know, and all the viewers that's going to be there that want to come up and talk and hang out. And, you know, I just wish that we had more time to, to uh, get together and, and spend more time with, with, with each other up there. But... It's going to be fun, though. We're going to have a great time, and I'm looking forward to it. So that's what's going to be going on whenever this video airs. Is we're going to be doing the open house up there. And I'm going to take my cameras and get a little bit of the footage of, of what I see, and I'll share it up here on the channel, okay? So this SNS, we're going to have a project that I've been starting on. It's one of my viewer projects, something I've been sitting on for a while. We're going to go ahead we're going to start on it and get going and try to get some of it completed and that's going to be the the main subject matter of this sns for this week and i do have one tool the other tool that i bought from kbc tools come in so i want to show that one and uh, and look at those inserts and measure those out a little bit and and just share that stuff with you real quick uh, otherwise we're going to get straight to some machining and have some fun with that so Last week I published the the hydraulic heads part one, so I'm gonna go ahead and publish the uh, part two after this SNS. So be on the lookout for that. We're gonna do some more grooving, some uh, cutting some O-rings, O-ring grooves on on the cylinder heads there. All right, so let's go ahead and get right to it. I'm gonna grab those tools. We're gonna set up the camera. We're gonna take a look at them, and then we're gonna get over on the Monarch and start making some chips. So last week I shared some tools that I had picked up from KBC, kbctools.com, and I had mentioned that one of my tools hadn't come in, it was on back order, and it finally come in. But what I was showing you was this Nicole Mini System, uh, tool system right here car that uses carbide inserts, and I had learned about these through Tom Lipton over at Ox Tools, and he showed these a few times in some of his videos, and what it what it is, is it's a kit that comes with five inserts and these are all ground different widths i don't recall what the widths are there's there's different sizes they're around like 50 i want to say around 50 to 70 thousandths is the different widths that those uh those inserts come in but extremely handy if you've got little you know snap ring grooves to machine on the od or id or something you know a little circlip grooves or maybe even small o-rings uh, anything like that so that kit comes with again five different inserts and you can get this from kbc tools and they stock these inserts you know you, you buy this it comes with the wrench and extra screw and, and the five inserts so if you break an insert which is going to happen or it's going to dull you can order this stuff from them they they keep this in stock so it's not one of those you know cheap tools that you buy and then you can't figure out what insert it is and can't ever buy another one so no worries on this stuff you can easily get it from kbc all right so the one that was on back order was the boring bar and it, this is it right here it finally it finally come in so let's take a look at it all right comes with the comes with the torque wrench there and I had mentioned that it was a three-quarter shank, and I, I stand corrected. I ordered the one-inch shank, but it is three-quarter down here on this end. It's got a lot of weight to it. Uh, it feels like a pretty, pretty good quality tool. And it, it uses the same insert 
that the the external tool <clears throat> uses. All right, so it just bolts on right there. So that's going to be great for doing those small grooves. I really look forward to using that. And I had mentioned that, uh, last week you can there's a I got a promo code that you can use at uh, kbctools.com. It's it's called the promo code is KBC25AB. Now I, I messed up last week and said that it was 25% off and it's not. It's actually for $25 off, a hundred dollar purchase or more. So as long as you get on there, you, you register at KBC, kbctools.com and you go on there and you make a purchase if it's 100 bucks or more you can put in that promo code and get 25 dollars off your your order all right and that's another good way to get their new catalog they they just released their brand new tooling catalog that's got all their stuff in there and if you make you an order over over there on the website or you can call them you know either one you can request a, a free catalog and they'll send you one out and i think that comes with the decimal equivalent chart too but uh, I'm not sure. I know I know a couple guys showed the uh, decimal equivalent charts. So anyway, I just wanted to share this with you since it finally come in, and I'm I'm excited to have that on hand and and be able to use it whenever we need it. All right, guys, we got a new project here that I'm going to go ahead and get started on. This is a project for one of my viewers, and uh, this is something I've been kind of sitting on for quite some time now, and I'd like to go ahead and try to get it started and uh, see about getting it finished up here pretty soon so uh, one of my viewers named James Savage he's uh, he's got an Instagram page called Savage Blades he makes knives he does forgings uh, you know forges knives that kind of stuff and he's got some kind of uh, rolling press that he's been fabricating and there was a couple parts that he asked me actually last year about helping him make so this is one of them right here this is gonna one of them's gonna be a drive roller and the other one's gonna be an idler and I believe it's used for, you know, rolling the, the metal through. So this is some um, drop materials that I was able to get right here, three inch uh, chrome bar stock. Uh, you need a three inch. So we're gonna try this and see how it works. And if it's uh, too soft of material, then, then maybe we can make another pair out of some induction hardened uh, three inch rod material there but it's a pretty straightforward lathe project not a lot to it there's a there's a sketch right there so one of them is going to be basically 12 inches long the other one is 10 inches long we got one that's one side's going to be a drive in with a quarter inch keyway milled in it one inch journals on both ends I'll, I'll machine a nice radius in the corners right there I think I've got like a one of those nice round carbide insert tools that we'll use so pretty pretty simple we'll go down there and use the monarch and maybe even pull out the uh the lnmx insert tool and and make some chips with it so let's go ahead and get started on one of them Let's go ahead and get her trued up. We'll probably have to set a steady rest on here to get the ends faced and, and centered. That's about one right there, so we need to go ahead and we'll check our other end here. See if the new Vaughn will move it around just a bit.
And I think we can live with that. And we'll just go back and forth and make sure we get her squared up good here. We'll just use our steady rest to uh, get the get the ends faced and center drilled, and then I'll take the steady rest back off there. So I've had a lot of people make comments and videos about showing how to true something up, how to set a steady rest, and I've shown this a couple times now. Uh, this is one way to do it right here: is take a piece of stock and go ahead and get it indicated with it hanging out of the chuck and then just set your steady rest to it. All right, we're coming up and touching right there. Now I'm going to block it probably here for a second. Come around here and touching it there. And then I'll just get some whey lube and put on here to help keep it lubed while we do our facing. I'm gonna get the the centers drilled in them. We're gonna we're gonna face the center all four ends and get all that out of the way. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get a get a rough measurement on this length right here, just to uh, see about what we got to face off. It's usually if you cut it about an eighth of an inch with a scale, you can usually take 50, 55 thousandths face cut on them, and, you, and it's gonna put you really close. You know, of course, if you need to be spot on, you're gonna have to do some uh, better measuring than that, but that'll get you real close. So it's. That's giving us about 60 thousandths or so that's got to come off of it. As I said, we're going to do the same thing with the 10 inch length one here. We'll go ahead and get both ends faced and centered. Uh, this is the tool that I'm going to use to to get it roughed down. That's my LNMX insert. I got her fixed up. We got some new screws, and I even got a new pack of inserts for them. I want to make sure that I got it centered up.
our journals are going to be two inches long on this 10 inch roller here 10 inch total length anyway I'm just going to scale it over all right we'll set an indicator at zero all right let's see what it does always try to come off fast when I touch off on that chrome it's, it's hard let's try a quarter inch on the dial see what it does here beautiful that's just that way all there smoking Always my favorite chip right there with that with that tool. I'm gonna go ahead and do another quarter inch cut. That'll bring a half inch on the dial right there. This is four hundred thousandths. That's what I was afraid of right there. It's actually pushing back. That's the problem with this chrome. It tries to push back in the chuck there. So I've got to reset this, uh, loosen the jaws up, we'll pull it back over on the center and I'll re-indicate this and we'll back off on our cut. There's uh, real, no real reason to be that aggressive with this. We're just having a little bit of fun though. All right, those are 200,000 passes right there kind of clean up that 400. Quarter inch seems to be the, a really good cut with that tool, with what we're doing anyway. So I'll probably just stick with that. All right, with that cut, that brings us right out an inch and a half on our, on our size inch and a half so now I'm gonna back off I'm gonna set a different zero and I'm gonna leave myself material there to cut a radius we'll go in there with this round radius tool right here and leave us a nice nice radius so we'll basically leave like half inch by half inch in the corner for that tool I had my offset wrong there a minute ago quarter inch is what I meant to say so we got our quarter inch there for our radius tool this is our last rough cut right here. All right, I'm gonna swap out tools. We're gonna finish that out. All right, we got 60 thou. All right, that tool ain't doing any, any good at all. I'm gonna swap that thing out. That one's doing better. That's the one I usually use most every day on that 1045. See if we can get that radius blended in.
it's looking pretty nice right there. We just need to finish out that face. What you think? Looks pretty good. And our journal there, whenever I finish turning it, we had a good thousandth that we can polish it down. Let me go ahead and check it again. One and a half thousandths. So we got good material there that we can polish and blend it all in. And that'll look good. Well, there's our very first end done so I've got this polished down and it's exactly on one inch so now we're gonna flip it around and I'll protect the chrome with some uh, soft jaws there some pads so that it doesn't mar the surface and then we're gonna repeat it on the other side all right let's show you the sequence we're gonna get that up in there and just get it held lightly all right We'll go ahead and get a couple of the pads in there. All right, now we just indicate it. I had to change up the tool a little bit. The, it just couldn't hold that L and MX. I mean, it was it was trying to shove it back too much. So I had to go with a different type of tool so it doesn't have so much uh, radius in there and, and and the feed rate. I had to back the feed rate down a little bit. It's just trying to slide on that chrome. We got that side finished within one and a half thousand. It's just the same. So we're going to go ahead and finish that radius out. We'll have a, just a tiny bit of facing to do there to bring it to our 6 inch width. Our coolant does not look much like coolant anymore. I think it's time to uh, get some new. I might have to buy some because I don't, I don't have any more soluble oil I think we got it that time.
go in there with our chamfering tool and give us some chamfers. Polish her out. All right, there she is, finished out. Give it one more check. One inch. All right, there's our. There's our first one done. There's our idler, our idler roller. That one right there. So the drive roller is next. Only difference is one end is going to be twice as long. Yeah, four inches long with a keyway milled in it. 